Hey everyone, I'm Flo, dude is behind the camera, and what a crazy year 2020 has been. But we have had so much fun creating content for you all. Here are our top recipes for 2020, and they can also be found in my newest cookbook, Chinese Home Style, on Amazon. We have tried making chasu with pork shoulder, but we still prefer the pork belly. And what I've been doing lately is freezing a bunch of them and pulling them out whenever I need it because you can cook from frozen in the Instant Pot and it is still so good. Instead of the glaze that we normally save on the side if I'm making it fresh, I've just been glazing with equal parts honey and soy sauce. Cha siu, which is a Chinese barbecue pork, there's just something about it. It's juicy and sweet and just a little bit crispy on the outside. I purchased some pork belly. We have uh, almost three pounds here, two and a half to three pounds. And I got this at Costco. Um, it comes with the skin off and that's what I want here. And they're already cutting these slabs. So we're just gonna use that. I'm gonna marinate the pork belly in a bag because I find that when I'm marinating something that I have to stick in the fridge for a long period of time, um, a bag is really, a Ziploc or a resealable bag is really the best way. Then I can mush the sauces already in there and turn it upside down and whatnot in the fridge, make sure everything is coated nicely so that we can cook it um, when it's ready. So I'm gonna make my marinade right in the bag. I've got three cloves of garlic that I'm going to press. You can mince however you want to get it in there. Two teaspoons of salt. And again, I'm just estimating here, guys. Half a teaspoon of a five spice powder. Quarter teaspoon of ground white pepper. Quarter cup of white sugar. It doesn't look white because I use our organic cane sugar, which is a little bit yellow, but essentially it's the same thing. Half a teaspoon of sesame oil. One tablespoon of hoisin sauce. I'm not sure if I even have a tablespoon in here. Three hours later. <laughs> Because I'm at the bottom of my bottle. Have you noticed the theme lately, guys, that I've been running out of sauces? Well, that's because I use them. That's it's been about cooking at home, especially during this pandemic, every single meal. One tablespoon of oyster sauce. One tablespoon of soy sauce. And finally, I picked up my bottle of Shaoxing wine, and I'm particular about Shaoxing wine, so I wasn't able to order this on Amazon or anything like that because it's not available. But I did manage to finally get to an Asian market and one tablespoon of Shaoxing wine. Now, we did notice that when I didn't, use, when I didn't have any, I just substituted with bourbon which is a great substitute, but you can also substitute with whiskey or sherry, something along that line. And it's still yummy. Okay, and I'm just gonna seal this up. And we're just gonna shake it up. This is kind of like shake and bake, but not really. Oh my goodness, it smells so good. I'm gonna save two tablespoons of this marinade so that we can use it to baste and the rest we can use to marinate the pork. One more. I'm gonna put all four slabs in here. And if you can't find pork belly, you can also use um, pork shoulder. Just make sure you cut them into about three inch lengths. I'm gonna try to squeeze as much air out as possible. 
And then we're just gonna mush this around, make sure everything is nicely coated. So I mushed it around quite a lot. The marinade is not super liquidy, it's kind of thick, so I just wanna make sure that everything is coated and um, well covered. And then we're gonna stick this in the fridge for at least two hours up to overnight. We're gonna cover the marinade with some plastic wrap and we're gonna put that in the fridge as well. It's late in the day here, we're gonna finish cooking this tomorrow. All right, it's been about 18 hours since we started and we're just gonna cook it now. Super easy peasy. I'm gonna put the trivet in. I'm using a six quart instant pot and about half a cup of water. I can't lift up a whole slab of pork belly with just chopsticks, so my tongs had to come out. I can't even like separate them. Here we go. Oh, it smells so yummy. All right. <laughs> I still can't wow. get the lid. You made it make a really <laughs> weird dying sound. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Putting the lid on, locking it into place, making sure the ceiling knob is on ceiling. And we're going to um, just high pressure for half an hour. That's it. You make it way too easy. <laughs> we'll see. I quick released after we finished cooking. It took about 13 minutes for it to come up to pressure and 30 minutes to cook. And now we're gonna see what it's all about. Well, it doesn't look like much. <laughs> Usually when meat is steamed, that's what it looks like. Not great. Remember, we set aside about two tablespoons of the marinade, and now we're going to turn this into a glaze. I am adding two tablespoons of honey. We're gonna stir this up. And it's really quite thick, so what I'm going to do also is add a little bit of water to thin it out a little bit. Maybe about a tablespoon of water. I probably should have done this in a bigger bowl, but that's okay. Because you can't be bothered, Flo. <laughs> All right, so with clean tongs, <laughs> just in case people are like, oh, you used that for the raw meat earlier. Oh, it's really tender. Okay, so I am going to put this on a um, lined sheet plan, pan, sorry, sheet pan. And I'm using parchment paper because <laughs> I live dangerously like that. Just make sure it's not sticking up on the edges, otherwise it could catch fire. Probably should have put it on a bigger pan. Now that it's all laid out. I thought, oh, it could all fit. All right, well, it does all kind of fit. Okay, so I'm going to use this um, glaze to baste. We'll just baste this one side, and then what we'll do is flip it over and baste the other side. Oh, it smells so good. Okay, we're gonna go stick it under the broiler. I'm gonna say three to five minutes, and then we'll flip it over. Whoa, dude. That looks so good. So this side was under the broiler for three minutes, and this side was five minutes. So you can decide how much caramelization you want. I think maybe somewhere in between. Maybe four minutes is a good number. Yeah. So I'm gonna slice it up on a cutting board. Maybe if you're using pork shoulder, 
it won't be so sloppy, I guess, because there's so much fat. Oh my goodness, I didn't even need a knife to cut through that. Wow. It's essentially bacon, right? <laughs> yes. So traditionally, barbecue pork is using pork shoulder or pork butt to cook. But I'm using pork belly, which is extra fatty. But you can also use pork tenderloin. And I think with the pork tenderloin though, if you're gonna do it in the Instant Pot, I probably wouldn't cook it that long, like maybe 15 minutes because there's no fat in it and it's already a tender cut of meat. Um, I've tried making chasu with pork tenderloin but using sous vide and that way I can control like how moist the meat is. With the pressure cooker, I'm really hesitant to put tenderloin in the pressure cooker, but you'll just have to experiment. So chasu in the stores right now is approximately $8 per pound and I only used about three pounds here, so max $24 for this amount of chasu if I were to buy it in the store. However, I bought six pounds of pork belly for $16. So in a Chinese restaurant, if you were to order this, you'd probably get a plate of rice with some veggies. If I can get the veggies off the plate. Probably wouldn't get as much veggies as I'm giving you here. It's a chasu right on top. Oh my goodness, it's so sticky. These green beans are so, so good. But if you're looking for a version without meat, you can either just eliminate the pork altogether, or you can try sauteing some mushrooms in place of the meat, and it'll be just as delicious. We're making some super delicious green beans today that are spicy and flavorful. You're gonna love it. I love pork belly, but you can use ground pork here. This is what I had in the freezer and I wanted to use it up. So I'm just gonna chop it up a little bit and marinate that and use it in the green beans. I have about four ounces here and these were sliced up for, um, I guess on the package it said for shabu shabu. Uh, you could use it for hot pot, but essentially it's just bacon, right? In thin slices and it hasn't been smoked, so it's just pork, pork belly. All right, so I just chopped it up roughly. Um, my mom used to, I guess, ground pork like this. Like she would just keep going and make it like completely mushy like ground pork, but you all know I can't be bothered with that. So I'm just gonna put this in a bowl and add my marinade. We're adding one teaspoon of cornstarch and two teaspoons of soy sauce and a pinch of salt. Dude, that's it? That's it. There's gonna be a lot of flavors in the beans and the sauce we're making for the beans. So I'm not gonna overwhelm it with too much. We don't want it to be too salty. I'm just gonna take off the ends of these beans. And they just snap right off. So you don't have to cut them or anything. You could, I guess, line them all up and cut them. But I don't mind just picking them all off. But I am gonna line them up because I'm gonna have to cut them eventually. Kind of keep the long ones together. I hope you guys have been enjoying the last several recipes that I've posted. I know the family has been enjoying eating it all. Yes. And they're just like simple Cantonese style recipes. And I've been really enjoying the flavor profile of them. I have about a pound of green beans here. I can't even believe we picked that much. Okay, I'm gonna cut them down to about two to three inches in length.
I just need two teaspoons of ginger, but I just wanted to show you how easy it is to take the peel off. Just use the back of a paring knife and you can just scrape off the skin without wasting any of it. So if you're not eating the skin, I mean, the skin is totally edible. You just have to make sure that it's super clean, but this is a good way to make sure that if it's not clean, you just get rid of it. After I peeled it, I did give it a rinse and I just need two teaspoons of grated ginger. Hey, did you talk about it being like a giant size thumb? I didn't because I'm only using two, I'm only using two teaspoons. So that would be wrong if I said, oh, use a giant swollen thumb size piece of ginger. All right, two cloves of garlic. I'm just gonna put through the garlic press just add it to the ginger because we're going to add it together. The thing about Chinese cooking is it's really important to get all your ingredients ready to go because the cooking part of it actually goes pretty fast. So I'm just going to heat up my wok. If you don't have a wok, you can use a large frying pan, but with all the stirring and I, I prefer the wok. All right, once your wok or a frying pan is hot, put in two tablespoons of vegetable oil. There, we were looking for the smoke. There it is. Can't see it <laughs> Dump all the beans in. Oh, we're gonna get that smoky flavor now. The wok hay. All right, we want a little bit of charring. That's good because it'll add some flavor. But I can't be stir frying this for 20 minutes because you know, you know, I don't have patience for that. So. I am going to add a couple of tablespoons of water, put the lid on and let them steam for a bit. I had to add a couple more tablespoons of water because I can hear that the water was evaporating very quickly. Okay, I'm just gonna leave it for one more minute. Okay, so this was a total of five minutes. And you just want them to be tender and then we're gonna remove them. And all the water has evaporated, which is good. So we're gonna add our pork because it's pork belly. I'm not adding any more oil. So you just want the pork to be cooked. Okay, move the pork off to the side, adding just a tablespoon of oil right in the middle. Adding my ginger and garlic. Also two chilies. If you don't have chilies, you can use um, crushed chili flakes. And if you want it spicier, you can add more chili as well. You know what? If I was really daring, I would cut these chilies in half and let the seeds come out, which I am not gonna do, because I'm a chicken. Okay, so you just wanted to stir fry that for another minute, add your beans back in. And a quarter teaspoon of sugar, two teaspoons of soy, one teaspoon of Shaoxing wine. About half a teaspoon of sesame seed oil. Turn off your heat. And that, my friends, is how you make the tastiest green beans ever the only way to eat them. These garlic noodles are so simple, but they are packed with flavor. If you don't have oyster sauce or fish sauce, you'll lose out on a little bit of the umami, but you can just substitute with some soy sauce and it will still be delicious.
If you love garlic, you are going to love these noodles. They are full of butter and garlic and Asian sauces that just give it that umami that is just so addictive. You'll want to slurp up the whole entire plate. All right, I am starting off with six cloves of garlic and you can use more if you want. We used to have friends that we ate at PPQ with and um, he used to joke that he would only eat there with us because we're, we're that good of friends that we can like stand each other's garlic breath after. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> you can use more if you want. If you don't want as much, you can use less, but it really is the, the whole point of this dish. I'm just gonna put them through um, the garlic press, but you can chop it up if you want. I just think if you put it through the garlic press, the garlic gets more dispersed evenly. It's, uh, I don't remember the last time you've done a recipe without using uh, the santoku or the chef's knife. <laughs> I don't have anything to chop today. It's that easy? It is. I'm just going to put it all in a bowl first so that it's easier to deal with when we start cooking because the cooking part of it actually will go really fast so it's really important to get all of your ingredients ready to go. So we have about I want to say two to three tablespoons of garlic here if you're using like already minced garlic like think that's how much you would need. All right I thought I'd show you the difference between spaghettini and spaghetti. So the spaghettini is much thinner and it only takes five minutes to cook on the stove. And the let's see, regular spaghetti, I don't know if you can tell the difference, takes nine minutes to cook and these take five minutes. Yep, I can see that it's, uh, the spaghettini is finer. Oh sure, you can see it now, can you? <laughs> All right, I'm cooking a pound of pasta. I'm doing this right now because I wanted to show you that I'm gonna throw this in the pot while I prepare the rest of the ingredients. And yeah, because we want the pasta cooked and ready to go. Okay, I'm getting my sauce ready to go. I already have two teaspoons of sugar here. And you can reduce the sugar or omit the sugar altogether if you like. You add one tablespoon of oyster sauce one tablespoon of fish sauce. One tablespoon of soy sauce. And two teaspoons of sesame oil. Just gonna stir it up, make sure that the sugar is dissolved. I use brown sugar because I find it dissolves more quickly. You can use regular sugar if you like. Oh, it smells so good already. I think it's the sesame oil. Oh, I can smell it from here. Yum. So I'm also using Parmesan and you're probably wondering like what, but this is what we call fusion. We use a little bit of ingredients from the East with ingredients from the West and we make a new dish with it. And the Parmesan just kind of brings it all together. So I am using my microplane here and we're just going to grate about half a cup of Parmesan cheese. My cheese is breaking up on me. Let's not grate your finger in there. Uh, let's not. So I'm just gonna leave those bits. It'll be fine. The kids will love it. They love bits of Parmesan like this. I want the majority of the Parmesan to melt. If you use too big of a grater, it won't melt. All right, we have our wok ready to go. We want this on a very low heat. Okay, we're starting with one tablespoon of olive oil. And we're adding four tablespoons of butter, unsalted. I'm gonna melt this in here. See if I can turn it down a little bit more without turning it off. All right. 
which I'm going to add my garlic now. So we want the flavors to just really meld in there with the butter. And we're going to cook this for about, I don't know, two to three minutes. And we want it low and slow so that the garlic doesn't burn. You can see the garlic is cooking now. All right, if you want it a little bit hot and spicy, you can add some um, crushed chili flakes at this point, but we're just gonna leave it like this. And I've already drained my pasta, and we're just gonna dump all of this in there. And the pasta is done to just al dente, which is just cooked through. I'm gonna use my tongs. Mmm, the aroma, also. Garlic and butter, what's not to like, yeah. right? Yeah. Just make sure that the pasta is separated, like all the noodles are separated. Now we're gonna pour in our sauce. Oh my goodness, this smells so good. I think traditionally, this dish is made with um, a yellow noodle, like a Chinese yellow noodle. But since I have this spaghettini, I thought I'd use this and it's, I like the texture of the pasta in this particular dish. And even if you don't have spaghettini, you can make it with spaghetti and it would be just as yummy. And everybody has access to spaghetti. Now turning off the heat and I'm adding my Parmesan cheese and we're just going to melt it all in here. Just visually here with the wok and the Parmesan cheese being sprinkled on is kind of like a cultural mashup, eh? It is. These recipes are in my latest cookbook, Chinese Homestyle, that can be found on Amazon. And I do have a special offer to new patrons on my Patreon page until December 31st, 2020. Wishing you all a very happy new year. May 2021 be way better than 2020. May be filled with more kindness, more joy, and more love for one another.